Hello, welcome back to my channel, Antoinette here, and I'm going to do um, another instalment of the last three sets of um, journaling prompts for my uh, hashtag past lives club September that I've been joining in with through the Facebook group with Amethyst Ascension, uh, Divination and Spirituality. And I'm starting out showing you the decks. So a few new decks are here and the rest are the same as before. Um, so we have the What's the Tea Amazon Oracle. There's a walkthrough on my channel of Amazon decks clasped together. I have the Career Life and Oracle deck. My Sean Cross Tarot has come out from Any Means Necessary for this one. I have the Character Oracle which um, I actually been finding this one really good. The Places Oracle. I don't know that I pulled a card from this, so I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Um, continuing on with my Lilith and the Machine Tarot from Etsy. Lilith and the Machine is the creator. Um, as I say, I'm not sure if this one's still in print or not, but it's worth checking the website. And the Poe Tarot was always out as a backup. Um, so this one did come out for, I think there's only one card in the end, but I did get this one out. And the Pocket Archetypes, as you see, which are these two cards here for um, the starting archetypes for my spread when I got going. And um, my start to all my questions is based on the Uncover Your Past Lives, is it? Uncover Your Past Lives Oracle by... Um, I can't remember her name, but it'll be down in comments below because um, that was the one that my friend has pulled for me and I've, you know, to get me going because I don't have that deck. But it is now available in a mini edition on Etsy. Um, and the Candle in the Cave deck um, has made a little appearance for this because it arrived. This is one that I won in a um, competition from Absolutely Over the Moon. Um, and it's just beautiful. So this one has been out because uh, it's created by two people, one of whom is from an area of the world that um, my family come from. So that's why I've been trying to get my hands on this deck and the fact that I won it makes it super special. So, um, you know when they say things are meant to be, it's meant to be, there we go. Right, that's enough of that, that's the decks. Let's bring it down. So I'm staying on this whiteboarded background. Again, I'm not sure why, but this is what I felt like using for this. Um, and I have, because I've been doing this um, in tandem with my friend Helen, we've already had the conversation and I have already pulled the cards, which you can see piled here, but I'll go through them with you for the sake of um, sharing the process and things, all right? And, and as always, my notes are fairly minimal because that's the kind of person that I am. Like literally, that's one spread there. And this is an A6 book, that's how small it is. So I'll keep them to hand. Um, right, I am using the prompts that come in the downloadable journal. Again, the links should be down below in the description box for you um, if you want to download that journal from Amethyst Ascension's Kofi shop. But we're starting out on, um, so this one is death, this prompt. So um, do apologize if there's any trigger warnings in this for anyone. These are some hard topics coming up. We have death, lesson and message. Um, I think the trauma spread might have been slightly triggering for some people. Um, however, um, being my own queen of swords, I'm able to usually split them out quite nicely and not attach myself too, too much to them. So I guess I surgically detached myself, uh, which was one of the last cards in my last spread, actually. Um, right. So in this, so my death was of old age. So we already know I'm a female. We know I'm a witch or sorceress of some description. We know that I'm um, widowed. And now we know I die of old age. So the question is, do I actually need to pull a card for this? Probably I don't because I know it's old age. Um, and I died old age with my profession in hand and also as an artist or doing you know, artistry of some description. Um, I think I said in one of my previous ones about being an artisan, I might have even made jewellery, perhaps. Who knows? Um, so for the death, question one is, could I have prevented this? Um, so this was interesting, and I got the sun card. So sun in familiar times would be a positive card, right? And it would mean a yes, 
but I'm not seeing it as a yes because I don't believe you can prevent a death of old age. I think if you you know when your time's up, your time is up. Um, could I have reincarnated? According to this being a past life, I already have. So um, what I see from this is actually with the smile on the face and the kind of halo around the head is I see somebody ready um, to move on to their next stages of life or carnation, um, depending on how you believe that the world works, to be quite honest. Um, but that is more what I see here. And I also see that we have a little talisman on the neckline. So um, I just thought that was curious. I don't think it means anything in particular. And this deck doesn't come with a guidebook, so it is um, your intuitive interpretation and your standard card meanings, really. So that's how I'm interpreting this card for could I have presented, prevented my death? So we have that one. Um, maybe I should bring you down a little bit closer, perhaps you're a bit too far out. Try that. Next question. What were my last moments like? So that's a bit of a difficult one, really, isn't it? And what I got was the two of coins. And in this card, what I'm looking at is here and here. So we're we going to focus. Is that focusing? Maybe it's there. Uh, I don't know. It's hard, hard with my camera. I think it's um, running out of juice. <laughs> it's slowly giving up on me. So yeah, with my two of coins, I feel like I probably could have, um, I could have my last moments. Um, we have like land, we have earth, we have sky, and we have one kind of here in the in-betweeny and one here in the sky. So it feels like it was a balance. So my last moments were a balance of moving between one world into another, um, crossing the veil, planning my crossing the veil, perhaps even maybe I'm focused and meditating on what's happening. If I know, what's, you know, if I'm aware of what's happening, and um, perhaps that's what I'm doing with that card. So that's what I'm thinking at this moment in time. And um, two other cards that I got with that, which were from the character oracle. So I got influencer and I have the elder. Um, so we've got like content creator here, follower, um, influence again for influencer. So I've got that one. And then, of course, with the elder, wisdom, bearer, experience, tradition, kindness, health. So um, I've died of old age, so elder fits perfectly. I'm some kind of sorcery, mystical person. So an influencer would make sense there as well, because I'm, I'm, you know, obviously been influencing things for a while as my part of my profession. Um, what else have I written? Let's have a little look here. So yes, I've written it's my time. My friend pulled, because um, she was pulling cards for me as well at the same time. And my friend pulled the Six of Cups when we we're discussing online to go with this one here. And um, she was talking about like, you know, memories, reminiscing with the Six of Cups, that balance of, um, youth versus age handing down um, which kind of went with influencer and we've got like a young person and an old person here we've got balance here like a yin and yang so it just sort of felt like they were talking to each other in one way shape or form and I have written I'm um, creating my peace um so creating peace my journey forwards with the wisdom bearer experience tradition kindness health however it is I'm choosing to wrap up what I'm doing to go to my next place Question three is what kind of regrets did I have? And I only got one card for what kind of regrets did I have? And I have the king of coins. And that one felt slightly pertinent because in my last video, I talked about the queen of coins. Just see if I can find her. Yeah, my Queen of Coins was in um, the question about what can I learn from this and becoming, stepping into creating um, the material security, wealth and things that I needed, the structure that I needed. And here, what kind of regrets did I have with my King of Coins? So I felt like these two were actually talking to each other. I felt like it was a, um, 
reciprocal kind of reading. And I have written down not having my life partner, not having my king, okay, the, the loss of my king, perhaps my soul partner. At this point, I'm thinking soul partner. Um, it's feeling a bit stronger in the gut for me than it was before, before it was a suggestion in my head. Now it's feeling like a much stronger thing. It just felt like, yep, your your regrets is not having this person by your side throughout your lifetime. And again, that started to make me feel like I've lost them at a very young age. Um, and these are just feelings. I haven't done any further work to confirm yes or no's with this. Okay, so this is just where I've got so far. And then my um, friend pulled a card and she pulled a um, oracle card out called Sharer. So that's backing up exactly what I'm saying now. And she she said to me, yeah, no one to share life with is my regret. Um, so her mediumistic skill and card pulling on top of me after I've pulled my card. So my cards go first. I talk about what I'm thinking and she's pulling cards while I'm, while I'm yapping and then seeing what comes out of the deck. So that's where we were at with this one. So that was really interesting again. So it's like another card from somebody else backing up what I'm saying and thinking. Um, and then for the fourth card is what was my greatest accomplishment? And I have the High Priestess. So she's already come out before in my spread. So I have the High Priestess again as my greatest accomplishment. Um, so I have put down my highest level of knowing, um, reaching perhaps the height of my spiritual gift of this time, being able to comply and do, um, be the person that I claim to be and the person that people expect me to be and the person that's been able to um, provide for myself through being this person. And um, my friend Helen pulled... Um, she pulled a card which is called connected and then she just said to me connected to gifts and knowledge and on the card was a picture of a key so she talked about a key then at that point she just said so it's like you're unlocking or you're locking something so that was how it felt afterwards with reflection when we talk about the key the high priestess the preparing the balancing i wondered if this is the lifetime that I bound myself because I've been told by a few people that one of my past lifetimes um, I was bound, um, as in, you know, locking away my spiritual gifts and things. Um, and it dawned on me afterwards, after this whole conversation happened, is that what this is with the key? So it's just food for thought there, something to bear in mind. Um, yeah. Next, next one out is the lesson. So let's try and get a bit, uh, a bit more vibrant with what's going on here, shall we? Um, so lesson's nice and short, she says. Although I've got a few cards for it. So how? So for my lesson, um, gluttony was a little bit of the lesson, along with pantheism and nature worship. Those were the cards that came from the past lives oracle. So how does this life connect to my current life? And I have a couple of cards. Yes, this is where I use two decks for this one. So when I asked this question and I drew these two cards, something in my head told me I should have put these cards away and that these two cards were meant to be the high priestess. The high priestess is supposed to be up here. But interestingly, I get the same feeling with these two cards. Um, and I got the Seven of Coins, because we're kind of looking at, we've got lesson and experience with the Seven of Coins. Progress as well as that. And then I have the Moon. So I think hopefully you can see then why I'm thinking, or why I felt the High Priestess is probably the card that should have been sat in this place. But on my Moon card, I have like a triplicate of Moons that I was looking at. I wasn't really paying attention to the one down here, but I was definitely looking at this. And my friend was talking to me about um, the triple moon. Now, when I write shorthand for the high priestess, my shorthand for the high priestess is a triple moon. So that was on my death spread. <laughs> um, so there was just lots of things coming back in. So we had the triple, the triplicate, the trine there. Um, 
And because I felt like it should have been another deck, I did go through and then pull out a card for myself. And this one's from the Poe Tarot. And I got the Eight of Candles, um, which just says one, two, three, and away. And off we go. So we're flying. So messages again. So that just then belted in for me, the High Priestess, because the intuition, the messages that she's receiving and downloads. And then here I've got the kind of hidden aspects, the highlighting of information, the intuition that comes with it, and then eight of wands being that kind of messages receiving reciprocates with all of this going on. So again, felt like this is still the card that perhaps could have been up there. Um, but you never know, because you know, perhaps if I had put them in, it would have been something different. But I would still be telling you about the High Priestess if I'd had the same message. Um, and my friend said to me, she talked to me um, about triquetas and the meanings of the number three. So we had this little discussion then about the high priestess, the triple moons, you know, mother maiden chromes type scenarios. Um, so it's just a nice little talking. And I, again, so I have just written here, um, learning to bring, cultivate the knowledge of unknown, to bring messages to others, psychic abilities. That's kind of where I stopped with that one. Next question two is what lessons do I still need to learn? So I have the Wheel of Fortune, which <laughs> this is where I feel like the um, decks are being sarcastic because the Wheel of Fortune is, you know, ups and downs. We're still going on when you're halfway there, you know, like you're halfway up the hill. The Grand Old Duke of York type song. Um, and then I pulled two from the character oracle. I have a reader. So this is the second time I think out for this one because it was out on the last set and it's out on this set. So I have the reader, the seeker of knowledge. Um, knowledge pursuer, explorer of information. So what lessons do I still need to learn? So <laughs> we are still uncovering stuff. I'm still having to do the reading and the learning. And then I've got educator, Im imparter, a mentor, a guide, a teacher. Um, my friend and I laughed at this and had, we, it's been a private joke. So I've had lots of people tell me that I should teach um, tarot or divination and various other things. I don't personally think I'm good enough for doing that. And reading for somebody is one thing, but teaching this is quite another. And I really don't think that I am uh, experienced, knowledgeable enough, um, verbose enough, perhaps even to be able to inspire other people to read and learn tarot. I have my way and kind of like my way or the highway. <laughs> well, maybe I need to learn how to deal, deal with that. But it, just, it was just hilarious that this came out. However, in my lifetime in now, as a different role in my life right now, what I do, aside from this and here on YouTube, my, you know, my, my, my daytime job, um, I do have to read up on lots of information. I do have to learn a lot of knowledge. I do have to educate other people. So it is there in my lifetime. But from a lessons perspective, my friend said, I think this isn't your day job, I think this is what you keep refusing to do on YouTube and various other platforms. So I think it's you like being scared of stepping up and being the person that you once were. Um, so yeah, I've just written learn and impart knowledge with others as a kind of footnote for all of this information. The, there's a third question to this. So it's only three questions per lesson. And what karmic lesson did I restore in that lifetime? No, resolve, sorry. What karmic lesson did I resolve in that lifetime? And I have the page of wands and I have here a throat. And in this throat, which I don't know if it shows on camera very well, there is actually what I thought was three people. Well, I could be very wrong. It could just be my eyes are terrible. But I thought I had a person here, a person here and a person here. And it looked like they all stood on rocks and I'm not quite sure what they're doing. Um, but I just thought that was curious. Back to the throat because in the early part one video, um, I think. I talked about blue throat, blue orbs and crowns, uh, king of cups and throat chakra. So I now have a throat chakra going on. And then um, I pulled an oracle to go with this and I have answers. You'll resolve your current situation soon. Work-wise, you find a unique way to stand out. You find new opportunities for job security. So, um, or new opening for job security. And of course I have a key here if I didn't point that out. Um, so there's a key in this one. So I've talked about keys already. I've talked about having to unlock things or maybe locking things away. Um, being able to express myself, open, you know, speak freely. Um, interesting being a freedom 
having been somebody that was like a freedom to speak up guardian. Um, so there's things playing out, synchronicities that come back into life here now. So this is where I've got to with my lesson. And what did I resolve? So I think I resolved my ability to talk about and be who I was and to become the person that I was in order to be the um, person that lived a long life and had to support myself with no other means, really. Um, and to be, I suppose, I don't know that I was respected, but I was probably, people were wary of me in my lifetime. So um, those are my lessons. And then, like, the kind of overall message, so a uh, message from my past life to myself and the past life oracle card, like the, the round deck, um, was the adventurer. And the adventurer has explorer, um, pioneer, crusader, and something else um, on the round card. Do I have light anything about that? Not a lot, but my judge card comes in on, into play on this as well. So the judge card that's been sat up here along was the end of my spread. So that's the start of my spread. This is the end of my spread. And that one came in with the adventurer card. Um, and um, so, I've, you know, the, the words I've kind of written down that you can see here. Um, a traveller, a crusader, a settler in new parts, adventurer and experiences. And then just basically my key to the cards that came through. Um Old Soul High Priestess, I've written on the back here, and some information there, which I'll tell you about in a second. So I pulled a different deck now. So now I'm onto my um, t other tarot and shuffled, and I got the Magician. So this is a big one. So I got the Magician. From the bottom of the deck, I decided to pull as well. So I had a balance top and bottom. I got the High Priestess sat on the bottom of the deck. So it's three times in this particular section that I felt the High Priestess energy. Now the High Priestess comes out a lot on um, spreads that people do for me. And that was how I originally came to Tarot was because people told me that I could already do this. I didn't know why I was coming to them um, before I knew anything about it. And then off the top of the deck again, so top, bottom, and then from the top, because it was like slipping off, so it felt like it wanted to come and speak to me, it was the Ace of Pentacles. So I thought that was really, really cool. So my message to myself was, um, again, I'm, we, Helen and I were laughing at me. So she's like, what's it telling you? You know, it's telling you that you're either sharing or you need to capture and create um, the knowledge. You write it down, book, whatever it is you're doing. So we saw that one as kind of like a teaching aspect, giving people like the grounding of knowledge. High Priestess, again, you know, the information, intuition, messages behind the veil. Um, she said, you know, you really can't make that one up. And then, of course, the magician, you are master of your own destiny. You will create what you need to create to be who you need to be. Um, and then just for kicks now, I was like, I wonder what the rest of the bottom of the deck says. So I started um, going through the bottom of the deck. And I will just lay these out as they came from the base of the deck. This is the well shuffled deck, by the way. So um, we have the death card for transformation so i need to be transforming something i have the page of swords for learning and moving something forwards taking something on taking it forwards we have the six of pentacles for balance the give and take the reciprocal inf like um things that i need to do in the material world i had the queen of swords it just kept going so this is a long one so i had the queen of swords well, that's who I kind of see myself as now and today, the person that has patience and basically works on fact. So we're working quite factual. I don't work on fantasy anymore, I don't think. I used to have a very active imagination, which people might have called fantasy, you know, kind of driven. However, I'm now wondering <laughs> what was fantasy and what was um, intuition. Um, the Empress came out at the bottom there. So the need to nurture this and move it forwards. We've got the sun card saying, you know, you're on the right track. I had the nine of wands. Again, so we've got that kind of um, drawing line in the sand, defensive feeling about this one, um, about what I'm doing. So um, still doing what I should be doing and having my defences where I need to have them, learning how to protect myself with it. The moon card 
illusions, illumination, unknown information. And it doesn't stop there. I then have the Nine of Cups, Wish card. I have the Emperor card, Taking Control. I have the Hermit card, The Knowledge From Within. I have the World card, Time To Start Again. I have the Judgment card, Karmic Lesson. I have Ten of Pentacles, right, bringing the manifestations into reality again, recycling what I have and bringing it back because we have the tree of life here as well. I have the lovers. I thought that was really interesting. So, and I know it sounds mental, but is the person I'm with now my lost soul partner? I haven't asked that question. Um, it's just one in the back of my head playing around. Ten of Cups. Goes with the lover. Where was my Ten of Cups in my um, earlier spread? So this became, um, well, I shared it with uh, Rochelle. And she said, there's an awful lot of chaos magic going on down there. Whatever on earth is going on, there's a lot of chaos magic. Now, that aside, my friend, so the other bit of information that was up here, so I did all that, and then I was like, oh, I wonder what else is on the top of the deck. And out came the Queen of Wands. So normally when she comes out when I'm doing this type of spread, this is to tell me that I'm on the spiritual path in the right direction. There she is. And um, my friend said to me, I'm being told Nine of Cups. What does Nine of Cups mean to you? So I was like, oh, it's a wish card, isn't it? Nine of Cups is the wish card. Um, it's knowledge. And that was what you could see written on my pad there. So, was, you know, knowledge, ascendance. Um, I've got here, talking to me as a high priestess was the other thing we started discussing. Um, my intuition was talking to me as the high priestess because sometimes I see the high priestess card in my dreams. And she said the high priestess is like you coming to yourself to give you the information that you've lost. I was like, that's no way. That's absolutely like, you know, kind of blowing my mind. Possibly blowing her mind as well, but definitely blowing my mind because these are things, concepts, discussions. I've never really delved into much. I know about them. I hear about them, you know, and I'm kind of like on the skirting the borders of, oh, yeah, I hear about this stuff. But, you know, that's not for me type thing or never happens to me. Um, and here it is. And um, out of the other card, the candle in the cave deck. So I pulled the nine of cups, um, really cute card. And it's pan, so it's a very earthy card, despite it being a watery card. But here's my nine of cups here. Um, I just put that one down to, um, like, cement that here, which I already have here. Um, I have my ten of cups. So we're all, it's all on high ranking numbers. So it's all... Um, like the movement to the next thing. And then, of course, I'm looking at this and I'm like, there is a lot, a lot of major arcana down here. And there are quite a few court cards. So it was just really interesting to do this. I mean, at this point in time, because I need to go back and watch this video because I don't, I won't be editing it before it goes up. I'll just be re-watching it to take out my notes from my extra thoughts that I've done in real time while I'm doing this with you so I can do my own spread. Um, and I do need to do like a, um, you know, synchronicities kind of maybe roundup of this. But whether I video that or not, I'm not sure because I don't know how many of you are actually interested in what I'm doing here. Uh, so in a way, this is kind of a vlog to myself as well. Um, and it's the easiest way to capture my thoughts and things. But um, yeah, I found this really quite intriguing and interesting. Um, it's brought a few thoughts into my mind. It's cemented some stuff, but there's still stuff here that I don't understand. And I'm very happy to take suggestions and information. Um, criticism, of course, being polite um, in the comments below. But it was just after all this went down, I walked away from the spread and thought about it. The, the thought of binding my powers before I passed away, passed on, because of whatever's happened, you know, did they in some way influence the fact that my husband was murdered years before in my um, lifetime? And is it that and what I've lost that's led me into where I'm going 
as I as I you know ended this life of old age of natural causes perhaps it's a thought so um I now have other questions so I might delve into so it doesn't just stop here now moving into the other questions is do I do I then pull out a pendulum but I've got some other questions now um trauma abuse who was it so do I want to know who caused the trauma abuse well I kind of want to know was it the person that I was married to or was it somebody else um the addiction type alcohol substance or something else i.e revenge is that what became my addiction my powers and things um was my partner my soulmate will be happy how did how did he die did we have children um did i make jewelry did i make talismans was i a powerful sorceress that would be a yes or no did my gifts make me happy i'd like to know that because that's from the was i bound did i bind myself in gifts when i died did i believe in reincarnation why did i bind myself how can i unbind my gifts and abilities and how can i unlock true potential so more food for thought until the next one take care bye bye